All right, this right here was or is a four lead motor. It came out of my central air conditioning condensing unit outside. It's got a white wire right here that some idiot me cut off, a brown wire, a black wire, and a brown and white wire, okay? It's wired exactly the same way as a three wire motor would be wired. The reason you wire it the same way is because one of the wires is redundant. In other words, two of these are hooked up to the same place inside the motor. The way you figure that out is with a simple multimeter. What you do is you turn it on to ohms and the two wires that ohm out to less than one ohm go to the same place. So for example, I'm going to take the brown, and sorry, these are all coiled up here. Let's just take the black. Here's the black wire. And the white wire. And you see it's reading 38 and a half ohms. Well, those obviously go to different places on the motor. Now let's take the white one and go to the white and brown right here. And you have 0 0.6, 0 0.5 ohms. So what that means is the white and the brown are going to the same place in the motor, so you don't need both of them to wire up the motor to your air conditioner. So what most people suggest doing is cutting the white and brown one and putting a wire cap on it. I cut the white one and I put a wire, not a wire, a wire cap, a wire nut and a wire nut and this just sits there with a wire nut on it. So the way to see if a motor electrically is okay, now this is just a simple motor that uses a capacitor, okay? There are now three leads, okay? I got rid of the fourth one. There's a brown and white, a brown and sorry these are so coiled it's hard to see and a black. What you need to see is the sum of the addition of two of them equals the sum of the addition of the other one. In other words, let's say from, well, it's easier for me to just show you. So I'm going to take the black. We're going to do all the combinations. Okay, so black to brown, black to brown and white, brown and white to brown. So first, black to brown. And we're going to look at the multimeter. 63, 63.8. Okay, that's black to brown. Now we're going to go black to brown and white. So remember 63, let's remember 63. Black to brown and white. 38. So 63, 73, 83, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, about 100. So 38 and 63 is about 100, 101 if you add those two together. Now we're going to go brown and white to brown. 101.8. Again, so okay, so if you take, if you took a piece of paper, 101.8 and you add 38.6, I could do it with my phone, yeah. It's, the motor's good, that's the point. Uh, here, 38.6, oops, 38.6 plus, brown to brown and white. Oh, let's do 38.6 minus 101.8. 101.8 minus 38.6. 101.8 minus 38.6 equals 63.2. So the other two, 63.8, 63.9. So you get it. 
So you could subtract, you could add, this motor is fine, okay? That's how you figure out if a motor electrically is fine. Now we're not saying anything about uh, the windings rather. We're not saying anything about the bearings, but the windings in this motor are completely fine. Okay, and again, you check for ohms between all the different wire pairs and the ones, that, the one that's less than one, those two wires are connected to the same place on a four lead wire, on a four lead motor, excuse me. The way to check, the way to check a capacitor is you change your multimeter to this. This little sign here, whatever it looks like, is NF, which is nanofarads. You look on the side of this or the back, this one says, this motor, this uh, capacitor is 40 microfarads. So after changing your multimeter to that, one lead goes on one side, one lead goes on the other side, and come on, this is dirty, I changed it out, 39.8, see that? So in theory, this is good. Now I changed the motor, so I, actually, I also changed the capacitor. But, so this is supposed to be 40, it's 38. Or 39.8. This one is supposed to be 7.5. One lead goes on one side. And on the other, 7.71. Now it will actually say plus or minus 1%, plus or minus 5%. So what this is, is a dual capacitor. This one is a 40 on one side, 7.5 on the other side, compressor, 7.43. Now we're gonna go between the common, what did I just say? That's the fan, I'm sorry, not the compressor, 7.43, and the common and the herm, which has the three leads, should be about 40, yep, 39.7. Okay, so that's how you measure this. Let's show you one more thing. I'll show you this. This is a contactor. It's a new contactor. It was hard for me to see in my air conditioner. So what a contactor is, is just a big switch that allows the current in or out. But, or not, not or out. It lets the current in or not in. So typically you can have one pole or two poles. One pole means one leg of this 240 is broken, open, close. One leg is always hot. Well, how do you test for hot? Multimeter, continuity, you touch these together. Okay, that means there's, there will be current flowing across. So with doing nothing, let's connect one to one side. Okay, continuity across this pole all the time. But on this pole, where there's another 120 leg, no continuity. Why? Because this is up. On this side goes 24 volts that comes in from your air handler. Okay, it comes in from the transformer and your air handler. When the thermostat calls for cooling, 24 volts across here, it pulls this down like this. Now you get the second leg giving the other 120. So now you get a full 240 from the house to the air conditioner. Well, where do these two go? There's more than two. There's one, two that I can screw in. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's actually six or five on this side, five on that side. Okay, so you can put a lot of, you can attach a lot of things to this. In order for a central air conditioner to work, just not a heat pump, just a regular sec a central air condensing unit, you hook up usually a dual capacitor, okay? 
And what happens is the power comes in from the house on L1 and L2, they're the lines, line one, line two. The power goes out on this side, one leg, two legs, okay? These main big screw-ins are for larger wires, so they go to the compressor, okay? The two ends, this is the contactor, two in, two out, okay? Here's this, okay, let's just draw Okay, so now you have the compressor. Okay, here's the compressor. It's got three wires. It's got a start, a run, and a common. The start goes to this, the, the, uh, cont the uh, run capacitor. Okay, it goes to Herm. Okay, the run and the common go here. So we have, we have in from the house and you have out. Okay, so compressor, there's your three wires, okay? Now, here's a common and here's the fan, okay? Now let's take the fan. The fan, we have three wires, okay? There's three wires, okay? These are in, you need 240. So one of them's gotta go to here. One of them's gotta go to there. Okay, so now you got your 240. The third one goes to the fan, okay? Last thing you gotta do is the common. You have to bring it back. So you have to bring the common from the capacitor back to either of those two terminals, okay? You just bring this common back to here. Okay, then that's what, you only have one, conne one connection at each of these legs on this capacitor, okay? You have one common going, and I don't know whether it needs to go to the run or the common, but I usually put it to the same thing as the common, if I could, if I could figure it out. Okay, if it doesn't work, you just swap the position of this common over to here. So here, I just cut the wires and pulled them through, unbolted the mounting bracket with the fan attached, and pulled the whole thing out. It's easy to work on it out of the unit. Just loosen up the bolts on the, on the fan shaft and loosen them as much as you can so they're not touching the fan shaft anymore. Apply a little WD-40 and it really helps to have a fan puller. I have one made by Supco, but I didn't use it. I used just a generic one that I had. And this one was on there pretty well. You absolutely need the fan puller to get it off, unless you want to distort the blades by whacking it with a hammer, which you don't want to do. Here I'm putting the fan blades back on the spindle. I'm using a large ratchet. Uh, from my ratchet wrenches just to spread out the force on the on the uh, on the blade okay here I'm tightening the bolts back up uh, the bolts go along the flat edges of the spindle there's two flat edges and that's where those bolts tighten against Unfortunately, I didn't film taking the motor out of the mount, but to put the motor back into the mount, you slide it in, and there's one bolt that you just tighten, and it squashes the mount against the motor, and it holds it in place. Let's go to this white one. Done. What I want to do here is hook up, hook up to each side of the contactor one of these fan contacts. 
So here the power is coming in right here. I don't know if you can see this. The power is coming in here, 240 to that side. 120, 120. It's going across. If this is pulled in to one black and one red, those are from the compressor. All right, if you look down there, there's a black and a red. Okay, now the blue is for a heater. Don't forget about that. The yellow right there is the start winding that's coming to over here. That yellow wire is going to go to the Herm terminal on the new double capacitor. First thing I'm gonna do is cut these back. Let's say to maybe, maybe I'll cut off like this much. The one that says Herm, we'll put the yellow on. Herm has three, Comet has four, and Fan has two. So let's see. All right, there's the Herm. Again, straight from the compressor's start winding. So that's really it. I don't think we need this. I don't think we need this to the common. The black was up here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna run the fan. The fan is the brown. That's the pure fan. So the brown one is gonna go to the fan, which is right there. Let's see if we can slide this in, it's a new one. All right, okay. Then all we have to do, where's that black one? The black one is going to go to the top leg of the contactor and the brown and white one is going to go to the bottom leg of the contactor. So that's 120 on each leg, that's 240 total. So there's the black wire hook up. And on the other leg, I'm putting the brown and white wire. The other leg. All right. And there it's hooked up. All right. There's that. Okay, now, I think I'm just gonna run the common to down here. That should do it. Now this I don't need. Wasting time here. Here I'm just getting rid of an extra common that they had. That there was a second common, second common attached because there were two separate capacitors, and I think it was wired wrong to be honest. Okay. Please go on. All right, it's going the wrong way. It's gotta be blowing up out of the unit. In order to switch directions of the fan, you just swap. All right, I gotta reverse it. The, uh, that little white connector, you unplug it, and you plug it back in 180 degrees from the way you had it. Hopefully it's gonna blow up. Okay. All right, wired properly. All I gotta do is put this back together and we're done. That's working. That's blowing up, sucking in. Thank you.